I'm back with another video. Today we are going to talk about debouncing in React. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamed. I'm a full stack web developer. And here on this channel, we talk about uh, modern web development and mainly React and Next.js. So let's get into this. Now, real quick, if you're wondering what debouncing is uh, in programming, it's the concept of restricting or limiting the number of times you're executing a function because it's time consuming, for example, fetching some resources from your database and delaying that execution for a certain amount of time. For example, your user starts typing in, in your search input. You don't want to start um, sending fetch requests or searching your database on every keystroke. You want to give them some time to type in a word and then send that request. To better understand the concept and how we can implement this in React, I have created a little example over here. And all I'm doing so far is I'm rendering this input type text and I'm using the React user state hook to kind of control this input. And if you start typing here, you would see the value of our input or our state being typed down here. Now the idea is that I want to debounce this uh, second value here right now is just showing that text, but I want to debounce that to to see it in action right now. Whatever we type in here just shows the same thing um, at both values. So let's create a new state, and I'm going to call this debounced, and I'm going to start with an empty state. I'm going to also use use effect to create a timeout. So we're going to call set timeout. And to this, we need to set a function. And we can call this function maybe after 500 milliseconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call set debounce in my timeout function and set it to the value of the text. Now, whenever you're setting a timeout, it's a good idea to clear that timeout if your component is on mounting, so you're not going to cause memory leaks if this component is instantiated and destroyed so many times. So all we need to do over here is to just call clear timeout and pass that timeout to this. So when we are on mounting, we are clearing this timeout that we created there, and then we are depending on our text state. So Anytime the text state changes, we are going to call the set timeout, which runs this function after 500 milliseconds to set the debounce value to the value of the text. So again, it delays the setting of the debounced state until 500 milliseconds. And uh, once we are unmounting, we just clear that timeout. Okay, so let's bring in that state over here and show the debounced. Now see the difference now, if I type in hello, this one, if, if you pay attention to this one, it doesn't show up until after a little delay. So let me just increase this timeout so you could see better to one second. So we refresh the page. So if I type in hello, after one second, this shows up. And the idea is again, if for example, I had another use effect over here um, that was trying to maybe fetch some resources. Maybe it was trying to fetch an endpoint. So I'm going to depend on whenever the debounced text is going to change, not whenever the text state is going to change because that changes on every, on every keystroke. Uh, instead, I'm going to delay execution of this function, which is time consuming. I don't want to hammer the endpoint on every keystroke, so I'm going to delay it every one second so that I give the user the chance to type in a complete word, and then I'm going to submit a request. Now that we have learned the concept of debouncing and how to implement it in React using user state and use effect, you can also use a package called use debounce. That's going to give you a hook called use debounce for which you can send your own state and number of milliseconds you would wish to delay or debounce, and it will give you that debounced value back. So pretty easy if we were to use this package in our own example over here. 
So I'm going to copy this and install this package over here. And again, all we need to do is to get this hook. So I'm going to copy this hook. Let me just run the dev server again. So I no longer need these guys and I no longer need these guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call debounced. And I'm going to use debounce. I'm going to pass in my text and the same number of milliseconds. It's going to give me that same value that I set and I'm reading down here. So if I go to our example again, uh, it's going to give us that same delayed uh, and debounced value. Uh, but instead of using our own user state and use effect, we just use this hook, which simplifies the whole process. We still had this text, which is controlling our input element. We are passing that text value to this use debounce hook. We are going to specify the number of milliseconds we want to delay the setting of debounce. And in every, like in here, in the second use effect, which I'm using again to, let's say, fetch a resource from my endpoint, I'm depending on this debounce that's coming back from uh, this hook. That's it for this video, folks. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments for me. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can cancel a fetch request using the abort controller API to prevent setting state on an unmounted component which actually works with this debounce and actually sending this fetch request. So stay tuned on the channel uh, for that video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.